Okay, so we're in class test 1 of 2018, and we're looking at question 6. Okay, so each of the statements below either provide a proof, if the statement is true, or a counterexample if the statement is false. So our first 6.1. If this set x1 to xn is linearly independent, then the set ax1 to axn, so all the, just that set where the h factor times by a is also linearly independent. Okay, that's not going to be true, because what if the a was a zero matrix? I don't know, make it false. So that can be a counterexample of the zero matrix if we let A be the zero matrix. Um, let me just be, if I want to give a counterexample, I think that would be fine, but let me make it, like explicitly make an actual, completely, a, a completely concrete example. So let me have, consider the set. So I'm going to, I'm going to let N equal 1, and I'm going to let X then, so we just have X1 in that set, and then that set, that vector X1 could be like, the simplest vector I can think of, which is maybe one zero here in R2. So we will have sets like this, one zero, that's linear independence, okay. Um, but one zero zero, oh no, being times by the zero matrix, so zero 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 times one, zero, and that just gives you the zero vector, right? So that set containing just the zero vector is linearly dependent, of course. Okay, so that's a counterexample. And then you just asked us to provide a counterexample, right? If it was false, yes. Okay. If the set AX1 to AXN is linearly independent, then the set X1 to XN is also linearly independent. So this is probably going to be true if they just had a similar thing that was just false. So the change of dependent will probably be different, probably true. That's how they usually set these questions up. Um, so let's try and prove it. Okay. So how would you prove that x1? We want to prove that we want to assume this and prove this. So we want to assume that ax1 to axn is linearly independent, and we're going to prove that x1 to xn is linearly independent. So to prove x1 to xn is linearly independent, of course you take linear combination of it, set it equal to zero, and you try and show that all the scalars are zero. So to get to bring in our ax1s, we can times both sides by a. And then if you do that, the linearity of matrix multiplication will make the a's come inside. So you'll end up with this. And then all the scalars are 0 because ax1 to axn are linearly independent. So that's, gonna help, that's how the proof will work. Let's write that down carefully. OK. So it's true. And here's a proof. Um, OK. So we take ax1 all the way to... Oh, a1x1 all the way to anxn, so that equals to 0. Now that implies that a of both sides, oh, that's, that's a 0 vector, is equal to a times the 0 vector. OK, but that's the same as if you, because a is linear, so it respects, it preserves vector addition. K and A or anything times a zero vector is a zero vector. Okay, now A is linear, so it preserves, respects scalar multiplication, so you can bring out the scalars in each case. Okay, and now this is linear combination of of A X1 to Xn, which so that implies that A1 equals zero equals A1 equals A2 or they all equal zero, um, because AX1 to AXN was assumed to be linearly independent. Okay. Yeah, so this disproves the theorem. Okay. So this proves that if X1 to XN is we don't need to re repeat it. We've proved it. We don't need to repeat the theorem. Then we give it a proof. Okay, that's what they wanted us to do. Uh, so that's all.